so we're we're pretty much in the last week of October time flying by it's October 24th today this is the CMC markets weekly charting analysis webinar with myself Jasper Lawler just got the the risk warning on the screen here I'm going to allow you to peruse that at your leisure bit of a bit of a move taking place in in equity indices noticeably the the German DAX or the, the Germany 30 as our product is listed that touched its highest level all year pulled back slightly from there so we're going to assess that potential there for a bit of a break higher but uh, not sure that that's necessarily going to follow through on the other indices we're going to touch on that too any questions you have on any particular stock index currency or commodity uh, please feel free to to let me know at any point. I'll answer your question as you answer it, uh, as you ask it. Quite a bit of M and A going on as well. Um, <coughs> so for those of you um, buying the individual shares within CMC Markets, uh, quite a few deals taking place there. Anyone who owns French Connection shares, quite happy today. bit of M&A talk there. Uh, if you're buying the US shares then um, Time Warner shares doing pretty well or expected to do pretty well on the open. Um, AT&T looking to buy out Time Warner though it looks like it may get into a little bit of trouble with regulators the, um, and the two presidential candidates have both said they would. Uh, well I think Clinton said she would assess the deal so a bit fudgy there. Cl Trump said he would just um, <laughs> <laughs> he would just stop it um, so no messing there um, both quite interventionist candidates so um, bit of a bit of a kind of general risk to deal making in the US potentially if both these candidates get in either one really um, though I suspect with Clinton it's probably more um, you know more pre-election rhetoric than actual uh, you know genuinely meaning it <coughs> So as I mentioned the Germany 30 to start with, let's go straight into that because um, that is, um, it, it's pulling back a little bit but um, it's it's right up there. So this is the range that we've been talking about for a, a number of webinars now. This is the daily chart so you can see we've been stuck in this range. I, I mentioned just in a short note last week that it's been in that range here for 12 weeks. If you start down here and so you know 12 weeks about three months you know uh, and we're eyeing a potential breakout here now we're obviously pushing into the highs we've edged slightly above it and we've also seen a break of this RSI well-defined trend line down here and this bottom trend line holding up pretty well so this momentum shift to me suggesting that while of course we can get a bit of a pullback from those selling the top of the range I think eventually this breakout could happen now we do have a few layers of resistance right above um, quite a clear cut one is that if you look at this little move high here from from trough to peak you see it pulled back quite nicely into the 61.8 and it's moved up higher to the top of the range an extension of that breakout a 61.8 extension would take us pretty much bang on to the 11,000 mark so that would be a, an obvious first target should this to this move higher, uh, gain a bit more legs, um, and then as you you know as you pull back the the weekly chart, you can see that you know we start pushing into the highs of um, of November last year. Um, so you know we got the we got the break above this high here. We've been you know we've been pretty flat, um, but signs starting to show now that maybe um, this was some accumulation in here and the the market's going to push higher why might that be the case well one is we'll have a look at the another chart and the second is the euro the euro dropped down to seven month lows last week after the ecb basically didn't say anything but the market nonetheless took it that december is a is a likely time in which uh the ecb will reveal its latest forecasts and possibly announce that it's going to extend its QE program probably for another six months if they are going to do it to give themselves a bit more time to print some more money and hopefully get to their uh, inflation target 
Uh, Eurozone inflation did hit a t near a two-year high last week, so inflation already heading in the right direction. So questionable whether this is needed, but um, you know the central bank thinks their policy are working, so that you know they're continuing what they believe is a successful policy. <coughs> So obviously more money printing the euros devalues each euro that's out there and pushes the euro lower. Uh, let's just look at that euro chart you know, while we're talking about these, um, <coughs> these kind of correlations. You know, why, why is the weak euro good for the DAX? Well, similar reason that um, the weak pound is good for the FTSE. We've got a lot of multinationals in these big stock indices and just a weak currency translates well uh, for their foreign earnings. So you can see this is you know this was the this is the Brexit range which contained uh, you know just the day after Brexit is contained the euro for pretty much a similar amount of time as the the DAX even a bit longer um, than the DAX has been in its price range. So we had this triangle pattern within the price range which we saw a nice breakdown from in the last couple of weeks and we've actually pipped below this June 24th low now. And so an obvious next layer of support would be these lows down here just above 108 and there's quite a cluster of support down in this 108 type vicinity so you'd imagine there's a fair few um, profit you know profit taking um, potential uh, going along buy orders in the sort of 108 type vicinity um, so if indeed we do push a bit lower from from the gains that we've already had you know this this would be a a logical sticking point this kind of price zone around around 108 and obviously heading all the way down here we had a bit of a kind of false breakdown which took us almost down to 107 if we take this um, triangle pattern here which is quite well defined and we just do a little extension of that from the breakout area then we've already reached the 100% extension and I can actually modify that can I? it's going to do the trend line is it? ah oh, here we go <coughs> and here, here, here we are the 161.8 is just below at 108 mark, sort of probably in the medium, in the middle of these two price points. So again, a little cluster of support down there potentially. Um, you know, you wouldn't really describe this whole r piece of price action here as a trend. This is this is obviously a short-term downtrend, uh, which you want to try and you know um, sell bounces into down into this support potentially. Uh, but you know, in the greater scheme of things, we're pretty much in, in, a, in a sideways range. So until it happens, you know, um, the you know my assumption is that this this kind of the bottom of this price range is, is going to hold. So until until it happens, I mean, until the breakout happens, uh, you've got to assume it's not going to happen. If that makes sense. So mix. Uh, jumped around a bit there between um, indices and, and, and currencies there but um, yeah I think it's not a coincidence that the euro is breaking its range to the downside and the DAX is breaking its range to the upside and we may as well do a similar looking comparison here with the, um, the UK 100 now this is, a, this is on a short term time frame I typically don't use the moving averages too much on the short time frames but obviously they're just they're stuck there from the the higher time frames what we're looking at here is the the hourly chart and this was the big sell-off that we had between uh, as I mentioned here between the October 11th and 13th we've got a pull back to the 61.8 drop down to the low again and then we're pushing back up and we're kind of struggling again at this 61.8 and um, while we opened higher today in UK markets we're well off the highs but now we're coming back again a bit. <coughs> so definitely multiple attempts at this uh, resistance here and you can kind of see why because this short term moving average is above uh, the uh, the longer term I've just got the, the 20 and 50 period moving averages here and if we do push out to a, to a daily chart you can see that's been the case on the daily chart 
for all this all this extension that we had um, obviously it's the moving averages are, are lagging indicators so we had the big the brexit drop the rally up through the brexit highs and at that point you know once we were already at the highs you saw that the trend was starting to open up the moving averages were starting to spread and the market ticked higher and so every drop has been a buying opportunity even dropped through the through this first low here you start to think maybe the the uptrend's unwinding a bit after hip coming close to 7000 well it then does find support at the you know before the next low and rallies up again so we're still in that kind of mode and you can see that it's the the 20 day moving average that's, which is supporting the FTSE quite well but that's not to say we can't have another drop so that that's when you know that's when we're assessing is this drop the four taster to a, a new rally up this price action looks a bit sluggish to me um, not much conviction there and it suggests to me that we're at least going to roll down to the low again before pushing higher potentially down to six nine hundred again mm -hmm. But you know, no point in throwing, um, you know, throwing darts at a dartboard. Let let's see if there's some reaction. Um, here we're getting a, another day. If we if we start pulling down through the the previous day's lows after reacting again, um, that, that you know, then we've got some confirmation that this 61.8 is actually proving to be the ceiling. You know, should 61.8 give way, uh, then we're obviously looking for a similar thing to happen up at the um, the 78.6 now depending on your style you obviously can be buying into the uptrend here um, but just being more cautious or you can just be on wait and see mode to see if we can get through that 78.6 before um, looking for, for, for dips to, to buy into the uptrend again or indeed waiting for the market to roll over if that's your expectation so you know slightly different um, different look here because um, yeah, well, with the, the the Germany 30, we were kind of eyeing the potential for a breakout. Here, we're looking to see if the market rolls over. We're, we're at resistance levels in both markets. So, you know, typically you want to sell at resistance. Um, but obviously, that only holds true until there's a breakout. I'll stick with indices for the time being. I'm going to jump across to the US. Got a got a lot of um, earnings out this week. Again, if you are trading any individual shares, have a look at our um, our weekly preview page that we've got on the uh, on the blog site uh, because we've got a list of all the corporate earnings that are out this week and uh, there's a lot of big tech companies. So you know all the favourites: um, Amazon, uh, Alphabet, which is Google, um, Apple, of course, kicking things off tomorrow. So. I think to some extent, you know, the market waking, waiting for some sort of positive earnings surprise um, as a buy the buy for the S&P 500 companies, earnings are expected to go up by 0.2% uh, this earnings season over the same, t uh, same period last year. So, um, you know, starting to maybe, so this is, we've had four quarters of earnings declines in the S&P. This one we're looking like a 0.2% gain, so you know the uh, nothing really to shout home about. But obviously, if some of these tech companies, especially with huge growth, beat earnings, then that's going to be a bit higher um, as a result. So quite a potentially important week. Uh, I think overall, it's about a third of the S&P are reporting this week, with those tech names being particularly ones to focus on. So far, it's been quite good in U.S. earnings. Uh, the banks have all beaten expectations. And I, and I just see that T-Mobile have beaten expectations. Um, one of the big U.S. phone carriers, um, the, you know, their shares are up pre-market. Probably a little bit in sympathy with the um, the AT&T deal as well. So, look at the chart here. Um, so I've had, I had this little triangle in last week that we got the um, the breakdown from bounce off support. We've come off from the, the triangle again a couple of times we've come off the support again we're kind of so we you know we're still in this range uh, at the end of the day um, I did add this longer term trend line which is somewhat of interest uh, if you draw it through the 
the closes here rather than the low connect this trend line it kind of matches up quite well um, with with the peaks up here that we're dealing with at the moment so you know we you know if this market is going to roll over it really does want to be doing it before 18300 up to the top of the range again I would suggest that that's above these trend lines um, of course could be a fake fake out above those trend lines uh, but it would, it's increasing the likelihood that we're pushing up into the into the um, the record highs again I would say it needs to roll over in this sort of territory um, to to increase the odds of uh, of lower prices. So I've covered the indices. Um, the uh, the next thing just to have a look at here would be some of the currencies. Um, and we don't have the cash uh, chart for the, the dollar index, but just worth noting here, so if you are a currency trader, always worth having a quick check of the, the dollar index chart. Pretty strong uptrend. I'm sure you'll agree uh, you know, this isn't any short term, but you know over the past few weeks, we've seen quite a steep incline in the dollar. And um, it's... Uh, it's now pushing into the 99. Um, if you've got a, a longer term chart of the dollar, you'll see 100 is, is obviously a big psychological number and has proved resistance um, in the past as well. So this all in expectation that the, the Fed is going to raise rates after the US election this year, um, a little bit dependent on the, the, the who gets in as president. The, the general thinking being here, and if you want a bit more information on this, um, check out our US elections page but the general thinking is that um, it, Trump obviously a big source of uncertainty um, but probably would if he did get in would mean the Fed might hold off in December from raising rates um, whereas Clinton um, a bit more of a certainty factor possibly positive for stocks initially but then you do have to consider that she would probably uh, be more of a kind of continuation of current Fed policy uh, meaning more likelihood of a rate rise in December, so um, US, election, U.S. election could be an important swing point in in how the things work out here. Um, but you know, um, number of gaffes from Trump um, has most people expect expecting that um, Clinton's going to get through pretty pretty easily. We'll see if that remains the case. One impo one thing that I noted last week, which is um, s sort of a, of interest to me at least, was that the um, in terms of uh, in terms of how how people are betting on this, um, it, 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 it's a little bit obviously you know in, in the U.S. On, um, gambling's restricted in a lot of states. That's why people have to go to to Vegas and um, and Jersey City and the likes. <coughs> Um, not Jersey, but New Jersey. Um, so, not much information on U.S. betting, but um, more global betting, uh, UK included, is that people are betting on um, the 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 the, psi, the the amount of money put on for Trump is um, <coughs> uh, is way less than Clinton. So Clinton has the money, um, but in terms of number of bets, um, Trump is ahead. So that's the same thing that happened with Brexit, where the so-called experts with the big money um, bet there would be no Brexit with the um, Joe public with a smaller amount of money um, who placed more smaller bets uh, got it right. So that's either just them playing the extreme bets or maybe having a, a better sense of things than the, um, than the experts. Remains to be seen. On the financial market sense, I think you you generally interpret the the market up near the the record highs, and uh, a big push higher in the dollar, to a bit to you know and a um, some some recent strength in the Mexican peso as well to suggest that um, there's a pretty wide spread opinion that Clinton's going to get it. Uh, I sort of deviated off uh, a little bit there, went a bit of an election tangent. We looked at the euro, so I'll skip that. Uh, let's look at sterling. So these are the these are the way that this is the way I'm looking at the dynamics here. This is obviously a short-term chart because uh, this this is the flash crash. Um, since then, we've been we've basically entered into a bit of a triangle pattern with a, a trend line support through here. 
Now we were breaking resistance and uh, and holding support, but as of this point, we're now breaking supports and holding resistance. And up here, now as we approach this trend line again, this this support is holding and signs this resistance is going to give way. So, um, what does that tell you? That we're basically in a price range. And um, I think for to to get any kind of confidence about going long sterling at the moment, you need a um, a move above above the 123.20, which was the highs we reached in the in the in the days right after the flash crash. You know, that's when you tell you that uh, not that you buy the breakout necessarily, um, but you know some sustained move above it, um, and then looking for pullbacks um, to to buy at cheaper prices would probably be the more conservative way of getting long cable here it's it's a bit of a bit of a stab in the dark if you're going long at this point because clearly that is a pretty significantly bearish move um, you know and just fundamentally here with all the amount of political uncertainty I don't know how many people are really going to be uh, going long sterling we're in kind of different circumstances now where you can't just assume sterling's going to hold its historical range um, you know there's many legitimate forecasters calling for parity against the dollar um, now that we've left the EU. I'm not one of those but um, yeah, you've, got to, you've got to be aware of the possibilities. Um, worth looking quickly at the Euro's sterling rate. Kind of interesting just from the perspective that Euro is obviously pushing into the, the recent low. Here's the Brexit, uh, the, the flash crash rather. Um, Euro kind of pushing into the lows, so that weakness in Euro dollar, not just dollar strength, uh, Euro weakness too, because obviously the, the pound has been weak against the dollar, it's not been the overly strong cable obviously, um, but the Euro definitely kind of declining on that ECB uh, weakness. Quick look at dollar yen, not a lot's been happening here since the last webinar, We, you know, you know, the, when was the last webinar? Here, we've done all of nothing since then. You know, we're basically in this in this range beneath 104. Um, it, you know, judging on this triangle, you know, we're expecting a breakout, but that's that's not to say that we can't get quite a severe pullback um, before this triangle breakout gathers gathers momentum. So, yes. <coughs> You know, should we get some closes above these highs? You know, want to, you know, want to see some pullback opportunities up there. But while we're hovering below, um, you know, you, you know, if you are looking to buy at the bottom of this price range, just be aware that we could get a dip back to down to the 102 type territory, which would be a 61.8, and would fit quite well with these two peaks in here before we got this nice breakout. So look at the triangle pattern. Um, the fact that we've had the breakout there, we've held the 100 level quite well. Uh, so if we never get another pullback down here, you know that's um, that to me would be a time to have some more conviction that um, the the move higher can be sustained. Now let's have a quick look at oil softened up a bit in the last couple of hours so this is the um, the, the daily candlestick in, uh, in Brent zoomed out a bit here so you can see that it this 61.8 level um, you know things are looking um, obviously these these levels were in place before we reached the low uh, but you can just see the kind of synchronicity here in the market um, extending down to a point that makes this 61.8% level um, important as far as support and resistance too and um, basically the market stalled out just before those peaks before the 61.8 you know nothing's perfect and we've been in this price range for a while since again look at the, the moving averages can because because um, oil has been so volatile um, and being quite trendy the the moving averages have for the most part worked quite well um, so you know, not in terms of giving you an early signal, but just because the trend lasts for a while, you know, obviously in this point period of time, you know, where I'm putting my cursor now, that's a point in time which you want to be selling. So even when you get that big spike up there, 
um, you know, potentially time uh, sign of a changing circumstance. But nonetheless, the moving average is so clearly in bearish mode that um, you know the the um, the the 50-day ended up being the uh, resistance, um, you know, matching this little breakout down here, and and we dropped and worked again. <coughs> so you know, same during this period of time, um, you know, very much a selling type environment, and then here when the market r turned over. You know, there wasn't much of a base here, it just zoomed higher. And it's only recently that, even during this period of time, you've got a nice little drop. Um, uh, you know, then we've, t we've, t we've, we've turned a bit more choppy recently. But it looks like the averages are starting to spread apart. Um, this was obviously the, the OPEC news down here. And so the market's consolidating as you would expect it would because this level has been pretty huge, this 53. Um, you know, we haven't been above it realistically um, yeah, since it's, it's July 2015. So um, <coughs> 15 months or so, a source of resistance, um, you'd expect um, some sort of slowdown at that point. But it, it, it looks like the, the market's ready to push higher and that would that would make sense if, if OPEC are, are reigning in production. On the shorter term chart, th this trend line has been working quite well. So we haven't had a, a close below it yet. A close below it even on the shorter time frames. You know, if we get a little drop down here, you know, wait, you know, look for some kind of drops, uh, pullbacks, because I think, you know, that's supports held for a long time. So, um, you know, once it gives way, um, there would be a lot of people um, jumping out of those long positions. Um, and then I've just got, obviously got this um, level just above 48 as a potential area that um, the, the price could fall back to. Though obviously, you know, our price is very slightly from the futures markets, um, but uh, 50 has obviously got a strong level. So, you know, depending on your aggressiveness, obviously we've just talked about how the trend is it's higher and it, we're, we're looking potentially for a breakout above here. So, you know, whether you want to go against that trend and trade that breakout down is, you know, is, is a, it's a matter for you. Okay. And uh, we'll just round things off with gold. So obviously on the short term chart here, this is the 1250 level, which has just been working uh, very well as support. And um, we did get the breakout above the uh, the peak here, uh, but we've not quite made it up to the um, the 61.8 near 1280, or indeed this this little bounce peak here. We're starting to roll over. If this low gives way, you know, the market's looking pretty soft. It would look like that probably 1250 is going to give way. Let's pull out to the uh, daily chart just to see where we're, we're coming from on this. So obviously this this support level worked well. It's the round number and the low before a massive uptick in gold. So it you know it makes sense that it's it's holding. But given this huge decline that we got, you know the um, you know the market's looking for opportunities to sell off, and if it can't even make it up to here. Um, you know, we could be looking at some declines down to, to 1, 200 again. So that is about it. I think that's, uh, we're just about out of time. So uh, thank you very much for everyone for attending. Good luck with trading this week. Uh, we've also got those US tech earnings if you're interested in the individual shares. Um, in terms of data, I didn't go over it in too much detail. There isn't that much of interest, really. There's U.S. durable goods orders, but really we're probably going to spend a lot of the week waiting for U.K. GDP on Thursday and, uh, and U.S. GDP on Friday. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one.